encounter this new man who's saying my bathtub is calling me. Th that that's weird. What the? What? What did I just witness? What's going on? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Switchy and today we are checking out a brand new game called Initial D Toge Legends. Now this is a, I say it's a new game but it's actually decently old. It's probably like four to five months since it has initially released. But I've been eyeing this game for a while now because it's actually completely inspired by Initial D and I think it's one of the only Initial D um, inspired games on the platform. So without wasting any more time, let's just have a look at the game. So first up we have Map Select which will get you into the map. Currently we only have Mount Akina but they, ha they have promised to add more maps in the future like Gunma, I think Akagi as well. So spawning into Mount Akina. One cool thing is that the loading screen actually looks pretty good. Like for example the Mount Akina Toge Gunma, like this part seems really professionally made and I really like the way they have set up the interface. So yeah, you spawn in here you encounter this new man who's saying my bathtub is calling me. That that weird. What the? What? What did I just witness? What's going on? Currently, we're at the bottom of the mountain. We're currently at the bottom of the mountain, as you can see here, and it actually says all of the uphill and downhill steps. There's actually, I think you press L, okay, yeah, you press L, you can actually see the times posted by people. This is the dealership, let me show you the dealership. The dealership all have initial deals by far. So stage 1, currently there's only stage 1 available, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and stage 5, they don't exist currently. So you have about, I think, we have 4 different manufacturers, you have Datsun, Toyota, Mazda and Honda. So in Datsun or Nissan I should say, we have an S14 and if you look at the UI over here, the UI actually looks like it's from an arcade game. Like, yeah, this is the R32. If you kind of hover your mouse over it, the R32 like spins, which actually gives it a very arcadey vibe. I really like it. Even the handling is very arcadey. I'll get to it in a minute. So you have, or we have, a still 80. We have a 240SX, an S13, S14, and yeah. Those are the cars. Currently, the S13 and the 240 SX, those are free. You can get them easily as your starter cars. Now, we have Toyota. We have an AE85 and an AE86. So, yeah, AE85 and AE86. And then we have this, which is a Mazda. We have the Mazda RX-7 FC and the FD basically case case car and this is use case car and then we have Honda which means it's Shingo's car Shingo's EG6 Civic and this is something I really like because like you can look at the car in any particular direction you want to pretty much That's no problem, but when you want to select a new car, look what happens. 
the car drives off. It actually signals left, then it drives off. And then the camera pans back and then you have a new car. Which is just so cool. I don't know if any other racing game has done that, but I could probably go on like this for hours. I can probably do this for hours on end. And it just looks so clean. It just looks flawless. Look at it. Signals left, goes away, and when the camera just zooms back, you have a new card. That is so cool. I can't even imagine how cool that looks. Holy crap. Okay. Enough talking. Let's actually get into the driving. I think you hold the gas and brake together to start the car. So I can never show that to you. I'm gonna remove the car and I'm gonna spawn it again. So, basically, what you have to do. You to hop in, you press the gas and brake together, and then the car starts up. This is amazing. And one thing you can do is that you see the little green engine icon on the top. Yeah, that is actually okay. It's really loud. I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. So basically, what that engine symbol is is that it actually tells you if your engine is overheating or not so basically what that means is that you have to be careful that your engine doesn't overheat because if it overheats actually will slow you down and reduce your times also the physics I forgot to tell you about the physics but the physics are actually really fun it's really tossable like you put the car in a particular gear and you drive it like you can feel that the car doesn't have weight but at the same time it does have weight because like you can actually very easily drift any car in this game but the way you control the car that is actually pretty difficult with actually a very cool chassis trick I haven't actually seen a chassis like this in any other game before and also the engine overheating thing that's also something I've never seen in any other racing game before also the way you progress is that it's kind of similar to Midnight Racing Tokyo you kind of do laps around the place and then you'll get money because of that and that will cause you to buy better it's kind of the same procedure as Midnight Racing Tokyo in the way it progresses but it actually is like a very competitive version of Midnight Racing Tokyo. Midnight Racing Tokyo is for those who want to like chill and kind of relax. But this is for more of a competitive type of gameplay. As you can see you have to take care of all of your metrics like for example your tires, your engine, the way you turn, the racing lines, all of those matter. So this is a very competitive game. This game also has teams where you can join. Like this game is a very competitive game. Like if you actually get into a team, you have to work over here for like hours. Now they also are planning to add a lot more to the game. For example, like other stages and possibly a whole revamp. But they are yet to come up with an official release date so instead of waiting I thought why not make a video now and later on when the revamp release I'll make the second video which will cover everything in the revamp and yeah whatever okay okay it kind of almost blew my engine up there now here we are at the first rest stop there are a couple of rest, stop, uh, I mean, rest stops here in the game as is in Mount Arkin as well. So yeah, you can actually take a break here or you can just keep on going uphill. I would say downhill is probably much more fun than uphill. Because uphill is like very slow. But downhill you can go pretty fast. And as you can see, just like that we have reached the top of Mount Arkin did it in a little under six minutes and you can definitely do better than that because I've seen people get like three minutes or something. yeah three minutes almost four minutes 
I've seen people get like four minutes, three and a half minutes on this Joke. But yeah, that's pretty good. I guess I'll wrap up the video over here because this game currently doesn't have a lot of content in it. It does have a lot of nifty little features which other games could implement. But for now, this much only is the content in the game. There's not a whole lot of other content. They will probably add a huge bunch of content when the revamp comes out. But for now, this is all there is to the game. So I guess I'll catch you in the next video. I'll take my leave now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to slap a like, maybe even subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care everybody.